Hello, all you beautiful creative people. Today, I want to talk to you about entertaining. Entertaining is one of those things that's almost an art form. Getting it right can make for a satisfying, fun evening for everybody. Getting it wrong can make for a night where you're just in the kitchen, rushing around, trying to get people things. You can't enjoy your guests because you're stuck in the kitchen and you don't, you're not prepared and it, you never get to really hang out and have fun with your guests. And to me, that's not what entertaining is. To me, entertaining is having people in my home and showing them a beautiful evening where they get a part of me. I don't want to be the slave that's running around the whole time. I want to give a part of myself to my guests because they're usually people I haven't seen for a while and I want to connect with them. My number one bit of advice for entertaining, do not put anything in the kitchen. No food, no drinks, no glassware, no utensils, nothing in the kitchen because the kitchen is where everybody goes anyway. They're already gonna to wanna to be in your kitchen. So if you have stuff in there, and you are running in there, you're not gonna be able to get through and people are in there and it's just a big mess and you end up having a kitchen party and you have this beautiful home and nobody sees it because they're in the kitchen the whole time. So do not put anything in the kitchen. You want to space your alcohol away from your food. So if your food is in the living room, the alcohol should be in the entry way. If your food is in the dining room, then your alcohol should be in your living room. They should be complete polar opposites of the room because otherwise you will conglomerate around one area because that's where the food is and that's where the drinks are and they're hungry and they're thirsty and they never move around and they never talk to anybody and it's just this clunky mess. It doesn't work. You have to get creative and find ways to make little areas around your home with different things. So what I do is I make one area with the wine and the wine's opened. The wine is cold on those big silver or tubs. I have like this bronzed looking one. I also have silver ones. They're maybe 20 bucks. They're good to invest in. I'm not saying you have to go and spend a fortune to have people over to your house. But it, things like this just make it a lot easier for you so you're not constantly running into the kitchen to get a bottle of wine out and open it and pour it. It's all out there for people to do themselves. And it just makes it easier. Always have them full of ice, full of wine, and the wine's already open. There's also an opener there, and there's a couple bottles of red. One is always opened because sometimes the red doesn't get drinking. And all the glassware is there. I don't want to be running in the kitchen for a glass for somebody because they want red wine or you don't want to be running in the kitchen for the opener or for the ice it's all in that little station people understand if you don't want a bunch of dishes to do you don't want to put out glass uh, glass wine glasses unless it's a small intimate party of course but these these really work well i think you get like 50 of them for 10 bucks on amazon silver buckets that i'm big on i have one that's full of different beer, always like a light beer and then a, a good stout. There's always glasses there and it's always full of ice. It's always cold. You want to have a beer uh, bottle opener, depending on how big the party is. I mean, if there's just like six of you, you can put all these things together. But if it's a bigger party, you need to separate it all out. You have another place where you have like the non-alcoholic drinks and all the water. You always want to have water and you want to get those little ones from smart and final they have the little tiny bottles of water you don't want to put big bottles out because people have one sip and they leave it granted if it's a small dinner party then have your filtered water in a pitcher and pour it around the table but if it's a bigger party you want to have a separate station for that and the food has to be heated if it's warm, you have to find a place, a way to heat it. Use the chafing dishes, food to sit there cold. You know, each dish has to have a tong if it's something you pick up. It has to have a spoon if it's something, you know, if it's something that needs to be drained, you have to have a spoon that has the holes. 
food has to have the proper serving utensil with it. You don't want to be running in the kitchen to get it. Spoons for serving. You can get like six different serving spoons on Amazon for like $15. Tongs for food, but I get different size ones in case it's like a little, little something that we're eating or a bigger something. Cheese knives if you're serving cheese. Just nice wooden knives. You can get things like this at uh, Pier One. Not that expensive. Just little touches that make your party more classy. Biggest things is where you set the things in the house because that's gonna determine the flow of the party. If you're having a bigger party, you know, like a cocktail party with hors d'oeuvres and everything, don't serve hors d'oeuvres that they need a fork to eat because you're standing there, you have your drink, and you want to have a bite to eat, and you you can't. You have to set everything down and have a fork and a knife. So if it's if it's a cocktail party, don't serve things that they need a fork with. Everything should be on skewers or just something that you can pick up, a taco or something like that. You want to think space to people ratio. So if you're if all you have is a little kitchen and a little living room and a little dining room, you're gonna wanna take some chairs out so people can walk around. You're not gonna want to have people sitting at the dining room table talking at a, at a cocktail party. So you're gonna take the chairs out, take the bar stools out that are around the bar at the kitchen so that people can walk through there easily and grab whatever's there or just set their drink down and talk. You don't want to have chairs everywhere when there's not enough room for them. And if you're having even a bigger party, rent the tall cocktail tables. They're two and a half feet wide table. And they're on a stand and they're tall. So people don't have to sit down and they'll mingle through the party. They'll walk through and they'll talk to other people and it just makes for a more fun party. There was, you walk into a party and there's like this group sitting at this table and this group sitting at that table. That's no one's gonna mix with each other, so it's not fun. If you have some older people, you're gonna definitely wanna have like a couch for them to sit on, but you want that to be open to the other people too. You don't want them to be shoved away in the side. It's, it's just a matter of thinking about your guest, thinking about your space, thinking about whether or not these people will mix with each other that you've invited. You can't invite like your kids and then invite some wild partiers and think that it's gonna make for a good party. I mean, kids are typically like a buzz killer <laughs> unless you have a lot of them and they're outside with each other. So you're gonna wanna, and you're not gonna wanna invite like a bunch of Republicans and one Democrat when it's right by election time. And you're not gonna wanna invite like some Bible belters and then some crazy pot smoking people. It's just not going to mix. It's not going to be a good party. It's not going to be fun. You don't want to have your music already on, already going, your playlist as long as the party is, a speaker central so it's not blaring out just on one side. Think about your people and who they are and what they like and that will help you determine your menu and your drinks. By the drinks, you're also going to want to have little cocktail napkins so that if they spill the drink or something. I never serve mixed drinks, but if there's somebody that's coming that I know loves a great scotch, I'll have a nice bottle of great scotch in the back. And when I see them, I'll bring it out and, and pour it for them. Nice touch to do. I'm big on having people bring things to the party. As far as food, I think it makes them feel like they're a part of the party. It's fun to bring and just to have different tasters of things. I like to make little signs of what the food is. <laughs> Tags and then I'll write on there or I'll type it out and, and print it. People know what's in each dish. So they're not like trying to again flag you down to ask you. The whole point is that you want everything out and everything accessible so that you can relax and have fun with your guests. Day of the party before you start getting the house ready and getting everything out you get ready you go upstairs and do your hair and do your makeup and get your outfit laid out and get everything completely ready for you because if you don't of you running around haggard and people will show up and there you'll be looking like hell and you'll never be able to get ready and you want to be mindful of the temperature in your venue if it's 
too hot, if it's too cold. A fireplace is always nice, but sometimes a fireplace gets hot. So even though you have your fireplace on, you're gonna to wanna to open some windows. If it's too hot in there, you're gonna to to wanna to make sure you have fans or air conditioning going. You're gonna to wanna to, you know, be mindful of the temperature so that everyone's comfortable. On our roof deck, the big draw is the ocean. So everybody comes up the stairs and they go out and they wanna go straight to the back of my deck because that's where the ocean is. So I will never put the food and drinks back there up where nobody wants to be because then it, again, makes people circulate and move. So if you have a great view or say you're doing like a Super Bowl party, so there's the TV, you don't want to put any food and drinks for the TV because people won't circulate. They'll all just be in that one area. And as much as I love scented candles, you don't want them where the food is. Okay, so if you are making food, you want people to smell the food or, or just if the food's already made and sitting there, you want people that come over to smell the food. And when they're eating the food, they wanna smell the food. They don't wanna smell your, your pink rose candle when they're trying to eat tacos or steak. They, so take those candles and put them in the bathroom as the best place and in the bedrooms. And the candles that you have around the food and drinks should just be unscented. I like the ones that you click on with these. I love to serve when I entertain a sangria. It's more festive than wine. It's colorful and it's pretty and it's really easy to make and everybody loves it. It's sugar-free, which is great. If I buy a bottle of wine and I taste it and I don't like it, which happens a lot, I'll pour that bottle of wine into a Ziploc bag and put it in the freezer and I'll buy frozen fruit, like frozen peaches. You don't want to get raspberries or blueberries or strawberries for white sangria because it'll turn it red. <laughs> so you want to do like peaches and pineapples. Take your wine that's been frozen and you put it in there with the frozen fruit and the frozen fruit keeps it cold and the fact that the wine was frozen keeps it cold too. But I always set it inside of a, another bucket with ice. A little bit of stevia in there and some vodka and it's the best sangria ever so this is the punch bowl that i have and it was like i, I want to say 10 bucks at smart and final so i'll do my sangria in here if it's a big party and i actually bought two of them so i'll put the ice in this one and then set this one on top so that it stays cold that's if i'm having a big party i also put my eggnog in here i do a great eggnog at christmas time and I always have the proper ladle that won't slide down. You want one that has a hook so it won't slide into your drink. But if you're having a smaller party or maybe you're taking sangria to somebody's house, you can use something like this. This is just a candle holder or a vase. And it's really pretty because it's glass. And then you can use a smaller ladle. And that's just, it's pretty the hostess will appreciate that that it's not ugly and tacky i think it's fun to have theme parties it gives a reason to go get dressed up to the party it adds an element to the party that's fun different you know it's it's just fun to do something different and i have a few ideas for you you can have a dinner party like a sit down dinner party and serve something really messy like spaghetti and meatballs or paella you know the big rice dish and get rid of all of the serving utensils in the house all of the forks all the spoons hide them all in the garage so when people sit down they'll see that there's no fork no knife serving spoon so you'll have plastic gloves at every place setting they'll have to put the gloves on and eat with the gloves and i've seen people feed each other and <laughs> It's a really fun party. It's just really different and it's really fun. You can have a masquerade party or a Halloween party, but tell everyone they have to dress up like somebody they know. Preferably somebody they know is gonna be at the party. That's really fun. And the other thing I always do at surprise parties and birthday parties is I give everybody confetti and we throw confetti at the person as they come in. It's just, makes it really obnoxious and fun and it makes a big huge mess and it's wonderful and no matter how many times i clean my house i always find 
confetti and it always reminds me of whoever's birthday it is so on Keith's 50th I did over the hill confetti it said over the hill and we had a beach party and we still go to that beach every summer 10 years later we still find an over the hill confetti every once in a while I had my mom's 80th birthday party for her five years ago on our roof deck and I threw white angel confetti at her and I still find that confetti it's just, it's so wonderful. The thing that's fun is to go to the dollar store and buy his 58th birthday on the roof. I bought a bunch of these fake mustaches and fake eyebrows. And so all the guys put them on and it was so fun. They just looked so goofy and it was just like they're a dollar and it, but you make everyone wear them. You like be really obnoxious about it, make everyone wear them. And it's just so fun. Great selfies too. The dollar store and buy wigs pink wigs, red wigs, blue wigs, and have all the girls put wigs on, and that's fun. Or masks, you know, one dollar, you know, like Mardi Gras masks, or just different things just to make the party fun and different. So hopefully you'll think of some of these things when you have your next party, and hopefully they'll help you enjoy yourself at the party and get to really hang out with your friends and family and not be rushing and, and serving while you're trying to have fun. Thanks so much for watching.